people have looked at the neuroscience behind biases and it's actually not too different from an addiction. So when we see evidence we like, it releases dopamine in our bloodstream, it just really feels good. And when we see something we don't like, it triggers the amygdala, which is the part of the brain that induces a fight or flight response. So just like we will have a neurological response to a substance we're addicted to, we also have a response to information that we like or information that we don't. So first to recognise that it might be dopamine, which is triggering our willingness to believe something, rather than rational thinking, once we recognise that, then that might at least be the first start towards being more um, discerning. Now, once we've recognised this, then what is a simple technique that we could use? Well, what we could do is we could imagine the opposite result. So let's say it's something that we want to be true, we would like to be naively accepting. Imagine we found the opposite result, how would we try to pick it apart? So let's say I found a study which shows that ethnic diversity worsens financial performance. I don't like that. I would argue, well, maybe they only measured financial performance over a short period of time. Or maybe it was performance that caused ethnic diversity. Once a company was performing poorly, then they sh that shook it out of its complacency and then it started looking for different directors. But now that I've alerted myself to potential problems, one being the sample size, how many years, and the second being reverse causality, I should then ask myself, could those same issues plague the result even though it's in the direction I want? Yes, the true data that I'm seeing shows that diversity is positively correlated with financial performance, but let's ask myself how long-term was the performance they measured and did they address the possibility of reverse causation? And that might be true for blinkered scepticism. If I see something that I don't like, imagine the opposite result. How would I respond to this? So if the test that BP had done had shown this was a pass, they wouldn't have said, oh, there's a bladder effect and therefore this test is unreliable, I want to do a different test. They would have taken that test seriously and removed the rig. But if you're willing to take the test seriously if it gives you a pass, you should be willing to take the test seriously if it gives you a fail, and then you should make adjustments before removing it.